How to configure a static route on Cisco routers. That's today's topic, and I hope as you're watching, you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button for me down below. But let's get started right now. Hey YouTube, this is David Staples, back with another Cisco video. I happen to be in California teaching a Cisco CCENT class this week, and of course the CCNA, the second part of the exam, next week. And figured now's a great time to go ahead and start this next video uh, while I'm actually working on this kind of stuff in the daytime anyways. Uh, I've got some free time in the evenings, so uh, today we're going to be talking about how to configure a static route on a Cisco router. Uh, so of course we're still working on the same configuration that we've been working on in the past couple of videos. Uh, if you haven't seen those already, feel free to check out that Cisco playlist on my channel. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and actually pull up one of these routers. Now, I did go ahead and add a new configuration uh, item here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and type in enable or EN for short uh, to go ahead and get into privilege mode. And let's show that to you here what I've added. Uh, so I'm just going to do a show run to show you the new items here. Uh, so you'll notice that under the Gigabit Ethernet 00, 01, and 02 interfaces, I've gone ahead and added a description item here. Uh, so if you just go into interface configuration mode and type in description, space, and then whatever you want it to say, uh, it will actually come in kind of handy if you can't quite remember which interface uh, is going out to what router or to what switch from here. Uh, but in the meantime, now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and take a look at our current routing table. So to do that, I'm going to say show IP route. And we'll see that currently, of course, on router 1, I've got connections to three different routers. So I've got my connection to router 5 over here at the very top. Uh, I've got a connection over here to router 2, which is my 192.168.5 network. And I've got a connection out here to switch 1, which is my 192.168.1 network. Uh, now, I know I'm wasting some IP space here with all these point-to-point -point links. I'm just using a slash 24 just to make things easy as far as our own configurations here. But let's go ahead and get into configuring these routes. So why do we need a static route? Well, there are times when I've got a really small network and I don't want to have to configure a routing protocol, even though RIP is very easy to configure. Uh, that's the routing information protocol. We'll talk about that probably in the next video. Uh, but for now, if I've got just a few devices or if I'm looking at things like my default gateway, I may actually configure that as a static route. Uh, so that I know that basically if any traffic does not match a certain network that I've already know about, then basically send it to this certain interface, such as an internet IP address. Anything that's not on my local network, let's send out through the ISP, through my gateway, to get out to the internet and let those internet routers, the ISP routers, handle that from there. So in this kind of scenario, we're looking at router one here. And if I want to be able to send traffic, say, across over here to the right, I will say that this will be my preferred path over here from router 1 to get to router 4. We're just going to kind of ignore router 5 for the moment. Uh, so if I want to go from router 1 to router 4, I need to tell it how to get to these types of networks over here, to these specific networks. So I'm going to come in and run a command here that says conf t to get into my global configuration mode. And then I'll start off with an IP route. I need to tell it what network I want to get to. Now, I already know about these routes right here, these networks here, so I need to tell about networks that it doesn't already know about. So for instance, that would be my 192.168.6 network, because we can see we already know about my 5 network, my 4, and my 1. So IP route 192.168.6.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And there's two different ways that I can configure this. I can either tell it to use the interface so if I scrolled back up to look at what interface is connected with my dot five, I can say that I can use GI00, or I can actually send it out to the IP address of the next router here, which is going to be 192.168.5.1. So I'm going to show it to you both ways as we move across and back and forth across this network here. So we're going to say GI00 to start off with, because I'm basically saying to get to the 192.168.6 network, just send it out this interface, and somewhere over here, it will actually handle that information. So I'll press enter. And so, of course, it's going to warn me about not having a default gateway. I'm not trying to send any traffic out to the internet, so I've got some very specific routes in mind here. So I don't really need a gateway of last resort in my scenario. Uh, but if I did have a route out to the internet, of course, I would want a default route or basically this gateway of last resort 
if I was going to do that. So I've got a route to get to the 192.168.6 network. Now I also need a route to get to 192.168.7 over here as well. So I'm going to say IP route 192.168.7.0. Again, with that same subnet mask, we're just using a slash 24 here, which is a 255.255.255.0. And remember, I said that I can use the interface like we did here with the first one, or I can use 192.168.5.2, which is the IP address assigned to the interface of the remote router that we're connected to. So that's going to be, again, 192.168.5.2 for this interface over here on router 2 that we're sending this out to. And of course, you can see that it took both of those. And so now let's come over to router 2 because of course we need to keep on moving across here, right? So on router two, I'm gonna go ahead and come into enable mode. So router two already has a connection to the 192.168.5 network and we'll just do a show IP route here so we can see the routing table. I've also got a connection to the 192.168.6 network, but I don't know about the 192.168.7 network yet. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and come into global configuration mode, and we're just going to go ahead and tell it about that route, or tell it about that network. So we'll say IP route 192.168.7.0 with the same subnet mask we've been using all across through here, 255.255.255.0. I know that the IP address over here on route three, or router three, that I can send that to is 192.168.6.2 because I'm using my dot one on the left, a dot one on the right of each of these links. I can take a look here and see that obviously my local one is the 6.1. So I know the remote one is 192.168.6.2. So I'll go ahead and press enter here. And that says to get to the 192.168.7 network, send it out to this IP address right here and it will get there. So that's all I really need on this one. On router three, I'm gonna come over here and we're going to say enable and go ahead and do a show IP route. And of course here we can see we know about the 192.168.6 network, we know about the seven network. And just to show you before I actually get too far into this that we don't know how to connect out here to the five network, we're just gonna go ahead and do a ping 192.168.5.1. And of course this will actually fail. It will take several seconds for it to go through, but it's going to try and send five pings through here and obviously it has absolutely no way of knowing how to get there. So over here on router three, I already know about my 192.168.7 network. I know about my 192.168.6 network. We can see both of those configured here. So then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and come in and put in, well, in comp T, an IP route 192.168.5.0 with that same subnet mask. And I'm gonna tell that, let's send it out to 192.168.6.1. So any traffic that it needs to get to over here, it will actually send out across through there. So now if I exit out of here, I should actually be able to ping that 192.168.5.1. Now, of course, the first one's actually going to fail. Uh, in fact, actually, the first two may fail. And first three apparently failed. Uh, and the reason that it does that is that essentially at that point, I don't have a MAC address associated with that, right? So it's sending out ARP requests to try and resolve the IP address down to a MAC address. Uh, after it finishes the ARP process, you can see that the ping goes through successfully. So now, of course, that I've added the MAC address uh, to my table, the ping goes right through. So that takes us over here to router four. Now, before I get into router four, we know that router one knows about how to get to router four, right? Router four does not know how to get back to router one. So if I come in here and go to enable, and we'll just come into uh, show IP route, we can see that of course I've got my locally connected routes. My dot three uh, is over here that's directly connected. My dot two is directly connected. My dot seven is directly connected. But of course, my dot five, these should all time out if I try and ping it. So ping 192.168.5.1. 
And of course, we're not going to be able to ping over there because I don't know where to send traffic for that. My routing table does not have an entry for it. So all those are going to time out. And you say, okay, well, you should still be able to ping router four from router one, right? So let's pull up router one and I'll just show you that it actually doesn't work. And here's the reason why. So we're going to ping 192.168.7.2. And the reason that it doesn't work is that I'm sending the packets from router one over here to router four. We know how to send the packet from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, but router four doesn't know where to send the reply back to. I know that seems kind of weird. You would think that, well, surely the router knows, well, the packet came in for me from this interface. All I've got to do is just respond right back out that interface, right? That's not the case. In fact, I'll run the ping again just to show you that it wasn't just ARP request timing out here. It's actually that we don't know how to reply to it. We actually have to go in here and tell it what route or what interface we need to send those replies back out to. So I could theoretically actually even reply back up here to router five and have the ICMP uh, traffic come in, come in one interface and go out another. But I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do here is we'll go ahead and configure the route to go right back across the network along that kind of bottom line. Uh, so again, if I do a show, Oh, I'm still on router one. Let's come over here to router four and let's go ahead and actually configure this route now. So again, we're going to come into conf T and I'm going to say IP route. Again, I know about these three networks. So I need to put in a route for the, my dot five and a route for my dot six. So to get to 192.168.5.0 with that same subnet mask, I'm going to send that out to 192.168.7.1. And again, I could very easily just put in the interface name on router four that I want to send that out. I'm just going to use the IP addresses here. Oh, I can't use my 7.2. I meant 7.1. I said 7.1. I meant 7. Dot. I typed 7.2. So let's put that in correctly. All right, so then I'm going to use 192.168. I'm just going to kind of scroll over here. I pressed my up key. You can actually see your previous commands by pressing your up key. So I'm going to change this to a 6 now for my next one. So I've got IP route 192.168.6.0, same subnet mask. Uh, of course, I'm sending this out to this connection or this IP address, which is on router 3 as well, to get over there. So now that I've got my routes set up all across that bottom line of the network, I should actually be able to ping any of these bottom routers from any of the other bottom routers. So let's just do a quick show IP route just to show you my routing table now. Uh, we can see that I've got my local or directly connected ones, but I've also got my new static routes here as well. If I just wanted to see my static routes, of course, I can do a show IP route static, and that will show me just the static routes. And of course, that works for the other routing protocols as well. I could just do show me connected, and it'll say, here's just your connected ones. If I had RIP or OSPF or EIGRP connected or set up here, then I could go ahead and actually use that as the sub command here instead. Uh, but of course, since I'm just looking at static routes in this video, uh, I'm just using that static command or that static sub command. So now that I've got everything set up, I should be able to ping back and forth. So let's try ping 192.168.5.1. And of course, this actually goes through all the way across from router four. Of course, now that I come back over here to router one, remember how this timed out twice before because it said, I don't know how to reach that. Well, if I run it again, now you'll see that it actually runs immediately. Since I've already heard from this router over here, I already have the MAC address in that cache or in that MAC table, so I can immediately reply. I don't have to do an ARP lookup for that. So that is how we configure a static route on a Cisco router. Uh, I hope you found this information useful in studying for your Cisco CCE and T or the CCNA. Uh, there's a couple of exams that go along with those, of course. Uh, you've either got the 100-105 or the 200-105, uh, or if you decide to take the accelerated combined test, it's the 200-125. Uh, so as you're studying for those, I hope, hope this will certainly help and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. But in the meantime, I certainly would appreciate it if you'd click on that little subscribe button for me. Uh, if you'd like the video, click on the little like or the thumbs up and feel free to leave any comments down below as well. I'm happy to answer those anytime. Until next time, you guys take care. We'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in.